Well, today we're going to talk about Isaiah 61. This is a short chapter, as Isaiah chapters have gone, but there's a lot of fun things for us to learn in here as well. So if you remember, we're continuing this discussion of the good things that will happen if you follow God. If you repent of your sins, you get baptized, you make those covenants with God. These are the good things that will happen. So we're, ta- we're going to talk a little bit more, uh, before we talk about last day's things, we're going to talk about relationship with Christ. This is a very important thing to understand. So verse 1, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. So this is missionary work, basically. Verses 1 and 2 are really great. In fact, verse 2 says, To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. This is really powerful. And if you think, I've, I've, these seem kind of familiar. I've heard these verses before. You probably have. You see, verse 1 and 2 were quoted by Jesus Christ in his earthly ministry. When he went to uh, the people of Nazareth, in fact, he went to their synagogue, on uh, to do to do Sabbath basically Shabbat, and he was there. He read verse one and verse two of Isaiah sixty one out loud to the people, uh, and he said, basically, this is uh, Luke chapter forty. I think is where you can find this story. He said, "This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears." So saying, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn. So these are the the criterion things that are going to happen. The Savior is going to come do these things to help us. He said in that synagogue in Nazareth, this is fulfilled today, basically. Um, In fact, Old Testament study manual says these verses in Isaiah relate to Jesus as does the rest of Isaiah 61 to him and to the building of his Zion in the latter days. He it is who is appointed of the father to preach the gospel unto men, to heal or provide forgiveness to the wounded soul, to preach deliverance to those captives in the spirit prison. Jesus himself cited these passages as evidence of his divinity. These are the verses that he quoted and talked about. This is really cool. These are great things that he proclaimed fulfilled at that time. And now moving on to verse 3, he, it says here, To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. So when we look at this, again, this is Christ taking us from a negative state. So we're in a state of ashes, and he wants to move us to beauty. We're in a state of mourning. He wants us to bring us a state of joy. He, we're in heaviness. That's the sackcloth, clothing, itchy, scratchy stuff, to garments of praise, happy things. So called the trees of righteousness, basically, help the people to not be sad anymore to be better, to be glorified and happy. That's Christ. That's what he is doing for us, basically. That's what, that's what the atonement does for us as well, is allow us to improve, to change and get better, basically, in what we do. So a great symbol of what Christ does to help us in our life. Uh, verse 4, And they shall build the old wastes, They shall raise up the former desolations. They shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. So this is new life coming to old things. Okay, gathering of Israel. They were scattered, destroyed. Now they're gathering together and will be a mighty nation. In fact, verse 5, And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, and the sons of the aliens shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. So this is, again, ancient Israel coming back. If we look at chapter 56, we talked a lot about that, in about Israel coming back, 
strangers helping out uh, people, and not so much the sons of the alien, meaning outer space, but sons of foreigners will come and want to help, want to take care of the resources, want to be supportive and helpful of Zion, basically. So verse 6, but ye shall be named the priests of the Lord. So this is getting to priesthood, the people who can, who are authorized to follow God and exercise his authority. Uh, Men shall call you the ministers of our God. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. So this is talking of, again, priesthood and temple. Temples where the ordinances are administered. So when we talk about God, you shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, this doesn't mean we'll suddenly start a war and fight the Gentiles and kill them off and take the spoil for us. No, that's not what it means at all. This is consecration. This is the Gentiles wanting to help the people of God out. And the consecration will be the way that they do that, basically. Verse 7, For your shame ye shall have double. Now that might sound strange, like a double portion type idea. Um, that's, that's not necessarily saying that you're going to get more shame, basically. Um, God is going to help us, okay? If we continue on with this verse, it says, And for confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land shall they possess the double. The everlasting joy shall be unto them. So where you had shame and confusion, God is going to bring way more positiveness than you need to it, basically. That's the, the, that B mentality, bringing those up. So he's going to increase it. He's going to bless us. They'll, he'll, again, take what we have and make it better is what Christ is going to do for us. That's what his atonement is all about. And that's what will happen more even in the last days. So verse 8, For I the Lord love judgment. I remember judgment oftentimes means righteousness in in Scripture. So for I the Lord love righteousness. I hate robbery for burnt offering. Now robbery for burnt offering so what that, if you think about that, the visual is you're stealing somebody else's animals, their assets, so that you can sacrifice to God. God says he doesn't like that. What are the times when we take from others to give to God? Do we pay our tithing by cheating our taxes? Do we pay a fast offering or a donation by robbing somebody we owe money? We don't pay them, we pay, that's that's kind of this idea, basically. Uh, we shouldn't commit sin, basically, so that we can o- offer to God. That that's that, There's an injustice in there, that's not correct. So he doesn't want us to go that way, basically. Now he does say in here, I will direct their work in truth, and I'll make an everlasting covenant with them. So he will teach them proper ways to do things. If we follow God, he will help us. There's... There's a bad way to do things, there's a good way to do things, and a great way to do things. And God wants to help us to do the great way of doing things. We have to be willing to listen to him, and he will help us with this. All right, verse 9, And their seed shall be known among the Gentiles, and their offspring among the people. All that see them shall acknowledge them, and all they are the seed which the Lord hath blessed. So the fame of Zion will be epic. It'll be huge. Everybody's going to know about these great cities. Verse 10, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments and as a bride or adorneth herself with jewels. This is garments of salvation. This is temple clothing, spiritual sacred clothing we use in the temple. So again, verse 10 is, Temples. God delights in us going to the temple and being temple worthy, having those blessings and opportunities in our life. Uh, So now this is what's fun too about clothing or covering oftentimes means atonement. Uh, His righteousness will cover us and our sins. These are the wedding garments provided like the Savior talks about in the New Testament. So again, temple, temple clothing. You might say, what about these, these wedding garments? Um, there's there's a metaphor, excuse me, 
I don't remember where in the New Testament it is, but there's a there's a story that the, that the Savior talks about where people are invited to the wedding and no one shows up. So part of the custom of the wedding was that the the parents would who who were putting on this feast would have clothing garments that people would wear to enter into the wedding, basically to be a part of the the, the wedding party, the group. And uh, there was a king that he put on a big party, wedding party for his son, and no one showed up. So he told his servants to go out and pick up the homeless people and bring them in, and we'll put the garments on them and allow them to enter in, and the, the other people will be let go. And we won't worry about them anymore. Kind of this idea of role reversal, basically. And, uh, you know, the people, oh, your sin is bad, you're homeless, but yet their sin kept them from God and they didn't follow God, listen to his commandments. So anyways, that's this idea of, there's certain robes that you wear when you get married or a part of that marriage ceremony. Endowment is what that comes down to, basically. Uh, so just as the atonement helps us, just as we prepare ourselves for a wedding to get married as a bride and a groom, God and his, Christ and his atonement basically will help us to improve ourselves and be better prepared. Now, verse 11, for as the earth bringeth forth her bud, and as the garden causeth the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so this is growing season, so the Lord will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. <clears throat> so this is the beginning of gathering as all these happen, the growth, the prosperity that's happening. Uh, in fact, Old Testament study manual says the Lord does not work alone. Isaiah 1, 61, 3 through 11 refers to the physical restoration of Zion and to the priesthood, which Zion's sons will use to restore again this glory of the Lord. Once again, the marriage figure is employed to depict the covenant between the Lord and his people in the latter days. Covered with the robes of righteousness and dressed as a bride adorneth herself with pearls, Zion awaits the coming of her husband, Jesus Christ. John the Revelator used a similar figure when he spoke of the marriage of the Lamb and his wife. It's Jesus and Zion, again in Revelations. Uh, chapter 19, in fact. Here, the bride is arrayed in fine linen, symbolic of the righteousness of saints. Thus will be fulfilled that part of the tenth article of faith that states Christ will reign personally upon the earth and that the earth will be renewed and receive its paradisical glory. Verse 11 of Isaiah clearly describes that day when the Zion of the Lord, the new Jerusalem, will bring forth righteousness and praise as the garden causeth the things that are sown in it to spring forth. So some great blessings we have that are there for us as we keep the commandments of God and follow God. We will have these great blessings that Isaiah is talking about. So let's jump over to our next chapter as we continue to learn more from Isaiah.